here, so we are waiting on uh, we're waiting on a couple others, but I, I know your time's pretty tight too. So why, if you're good, maybe wait like two minutes. Maybe I'll give you I'll give a quick intro, and then we'll we're going. We're recording it too, so we'll anybody that's, that's misses. No, it. that's great. Yeah, I'll hang tight. We're, we're we're good. I'll hang tight for two, three minutes, four minutes, and then we'll get after it. Okay, yeah. so it's James is missing. Who else are we missing? Casey, Casey Scott, 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 uh, oh, Scott, Scott, and Casey. Jeff, Jeff, come on. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. Texting. Casey said he's running a little bit late. Shock. <laughs> <laughs> Big nose of 21 bubbles. <laughs> I think I might have led him astray. He was like, 8.30 or 8.30, but let's see. I showed up at 8.15. <laughs> <laughs> I'm touch. I'll just get into the thing. You know, fucker. What's in this? Oh, beans? There's all different ones. Which one's the best one? Jess special? Jess is pretty good. That's like it's like Migas with uh, other stuff. <laughs> Mystery <laughs> meat? Uh, I don't know if there's any meat in there in a Jess. Cheese. Yeah, cheese, egg. The usually the, the Jess is always the one that's sold out. I go, go, I go. <laughs> Oh, good, Michelle. Looks like cheese. No, it is. Yeah. Oh, no. We both have space now. Yeah. It makes it again last night. It makes it again tonight. This is the space. Yeah. 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 The whole thing. The box. The one person. A brush on the little diet. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that many people. Yeah. Mm. I can use them in school. Yeah, that's no question. Maybe I'll take a bite. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's also cheap. Yeah. 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 Just a wine job. Oh, right on time. That Mick Cafe. That's that fancy <laughs> What's that? There would be coffee. Is that your hotel? Do <laughs> you use some hash browns? No, <laughs> green. Garbage, but. Oh, yeah. I like the coffee. Is it sweet? Um, I, don't <laughs> um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just good. good I just coffee. imagine them having some coffee. Uh, I don't put anything in it. So. Okay. Just black. So I, I you know, we're going to dial back in in a minute. I'll, I'll give a little preface for yeah. today. The background on, on him is going to be cool. Um, so, you know, yesterday was really focused on like being in the business and hopefully there was a lot of tactical stuff and, you know, writing and property management and all that stuff. Today, I um, wanted to talk and focus more on how do you work on your business and what does it you know, mean to be an entrepreneur and how do you think about leaving your job, you know, if that's the goal, which I think for most people it is, uh, to be a full-time investor. So there's uh, everything that goes along with that, your mindset and, you know, we can talk health benefits. I mean, there's all, all the stuff you got to go tackle. Um, Reed and I both have separate business life coaches. Trevor is my coach. I've, I've been working with Trevor for the last three years. Actually, the day I quit my job, I hired Trevor. So I wanted accountability. I'm like, all right, you're, you're on the trapeze with no net. Um, Trevor's been my net. And my, you know, we have weekly, bi weekly calls. It's like whatever I want to talk about, you know. Heather, the kids, business, finances, whatever. Um, it's been really, really helpful for, for me, and you know, I think I'll probably work with him forever. It's just a good, he's, he's half psychologist, half support system. Half therapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted to bring him in this morning and kind of kick off, have him just give a, a bit of a talk about changing your mindset and kind of, you know, kick this day off. And then he's got, so he's got you know, 45 minutes or an hour of his time, and then We'll jump into some of the activities we have, but today is just very much about mindset, goals, entrepreneurial thinking, and kind of what you need to do to to, to support 
that, you know, and the challenges that you have as you kind of all on that path. Yeah, that's great. So critical, isn't it? Yeah. So, Trevor, can you hear us? Absolutely. Can you guys hear me okay? Do you guys want to cut, move up a little bit as well, like the closer? Because this is the, this is the mic here down there. I think. We got one. Oh, oh, sorry, you got one. We got satellite. Nope. All right. Don't make. Keep going, Trevor. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, guys, and uh, you know, Andrew Reed, thank you for the opportunity to get your morning started. As Andrew said, you know, I'm my name is Trevor McGregor. I'm a high performance, peak performance, master platinum coach. I help guys and gals just like you, you know, go from where you are to where you want to be. And today I put together just a beautiful little, you know, 30 minute presentation that I'm going to take you through to kickstart the day. And then we're going to open it up for some Q and A for about 15 minutes. So coach T will be in your room there for about 45 minutes and then we'll wrap up and turn you guys loose on your day. How does that sound? Awesome. Excellent. You might want to grab a pen and a piece of paper or something to jot some, some notes down with guys as what I'm about to share are some of the high performance, peak performance things that, you know, we teach to people so that you can literally go further faster. And if you go further faster and you take, you know, what is commonly known as, you know, information, you can literally turn decades into days. That means why wait 10 years to learn this stuff and apply it when you can apply it right here. And that's really what I applaud Reed and, and Andrew for and putting the mastermind together there's nothing better. And if you go back to Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, which has been my Bible, he talks about the power of mastermind, the power of putting like-minded people together to literally you know, move, move forward and turn decades into days. So I'm gonna pull up my PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna move through it for about 30 minutes and then I will stop, open it up for Q&A and uh, turn you loose on your day. So Andrew, just let me know when you can see my screen here. Yeah. And can everybody see that? Good, yes sir. Excellent, all right. Well, I guess, you know, we're gonna really talk about something I refer to as mindset mastery. I want all of you to start thinking of yourselves as masters who are continuing to, you know, build a powerful mindset. And as we go through the presentation today, I really want you to not just take in the information, but ask yourself one question. Am I able to apply what it is I'm learning? Because if it was just learning it, or if it was just the knowledge, every librarian in America would be a multimillionaire, and they're not. It's the application of the information that's important. Would you agree, yes or yes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So again, you know, I wanna start it off with, you know, a timeless quote. And you guys know this guy, he's Mr. Henry Ford, and he says, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. And really, that's what we talk about in high performance, peak performance. It's really conditioning and cultivating a powerful mindset to believe that anything is possible. And really, that's a quote that I live by. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background so you know that who I am and what I do in real estate and as a coach as well. But I really want to share with you the first thing, which is my Bible. This is my Bible. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. How many in the room have read it before by show of hands? All right, if you haven't read this book, <laughs> I want you to pick it up, or better yet, pick up the audio book, but do yourself a favor and really dive into it, because again, note the title. The title says, Think and Grow Rich. It does not say, Do and Grow Rich. The doing comes after the thinking, and if you guys want to literally have financial freedom, time freedom, and location freedom, you owe it to yourself to dive into this book because it is the number one personal development book of all time. It sold more copies than anything else. And I highly, highly recommend it. So with that said, let's dive into the term, what does mindset really mean? Well, mindset is your collection of thoughts and beliefs that determine why you think, what you feel, and what you do. So I'm gonna ask you a question on that. Have you ever stopped to think about where your current beliefs came from? You know, give that a think because most of them came from your parents. They came from your grandparents. They came from your brothers and sisters, maybe your teachers, your church ministers. But guys, think about what your parents went through and what time they lived, or even then their parents, your grandparents. Like many of them lived through the World War. 
many of them lived through the, you know, depression of the 30s, right? So you got to really think about, you know, whether the information that you've been programmed with is enough to get you from where you are to where you want to be, because it might be time for an upgrade. Because I'm telling you, if all you do is operate on a mindset, you know, that has been like an old computer system, you know, that's not going to help you get, you know, to the outcomes that Andrew and Reed and you are talking about. You know, for most of us, it's definitely time for an upgrade. So in my presentation today, think of it as a, a mindset upgrade. Are you up for that? If you are, say aye. Aye. There we go. And, you know, my presentation <laughs> is really <laughs> but only if, only if, you know, you're a real estate investor who is committed. I mean, committed means you will not go one more day dabbling. You know, you're defiantly committed to moving, you know, up the chain, up the ladder, buying more real estate, partnering with more people. You also have to be decisive. That means that as real estate investors, we make decisions. Number three, you got to be coachable. I want you to empty your cup for the next 30 minutes and let Coach Trevor fill it back up. And finally, you got to be resourceful. It's going to take time. It's going to take some money. It's going to take some energy for you to make your goals come to fruition. So that's really who this presentation is for. And if you're not committed, not decisive, not coachable, or not resourceful, the exit is just over across the way there. Go find it now. All right, I see none of you are racing for the exit, so let's go. So again, I'm also a real estate investor myself, guys. I started my real estate journey similar to Andrew. You know, bought one little condo, then I bought a townhouse, then I bought a duplex, and when I bought my first duplex, that's when I learned what cash flow really was. Anybody ever discovered cash flow? Say I. I. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. And so I went on to buy fourplexes and single family homes. And really, you know, as I started to achieve some success there, people started asking me, hey, Trevor, how are you doing this? Right? And so as I continue to build my portfolio, I started to share what I knew with other people, you know? And really, as I showed them how to duplicate what I was doing, they went out and they had tremendous success in buying, you know, rental properties. And really, that's when the coaching bug bit because I figured, wow, real estate is one of the greatest wealth vehicles on the planet. If it can work for me and it can work for other people, I want to dedicate my life to sharing it with others. And around that time, I was also into personal development. I started to read all the books, listen to a ton of podcasts, a ton of audios. And I started to go to a lot of seminars because I wanted to be the best version of me. And that really, you know, allowed me to do a quantum leap in terms of what drives people, what allows them to achieve phenomenal success and what holds people back or even causes them to fail. And really, I was so enamored with this. I quit my corporate job and I went to work for this amazing man, Mr. Tony Robbins. Any of you ever, you know, studied Tony's stuff? Say I. 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 All right, so you guys know who this man is. He's my coach. He's my mentor. He's been absolutely instrumental in allowing me to achieve a lot of success. And ultimately, when I went to work with him, it was awesome because as a Tony Robbins coach, you know, I became one of his top coaches on the planet. I am a master certified, you know, coach and business strategist. This is an actual statistic, folks. I've done over 20,000 coaching calls with people like you. I've coached millionaires. I've coached billionaires. I've coached multiple Fortune 500 executives from companies like Microsoft, American Express, Dell, Blackstone, J.P. Morgan. I mean, the list goes on and on. But my favorite, 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 you know, group to coach are people like you. I like real estate investors, you know, because real estate investors are really, you know, I believe in the greatest position to go out there and create financial freedom for themselves and make an impact on the community, on the apartments, on the tenants, on the property managers. So as a real estate investor, I currently coach people all over the planet. I'm in Canada, but I coach a ton of people in the US, Europe, Asia, even Australia. The current clients I have on my roster right now collectively own over a billion dollars worth of real estate assets. And again, I've been doing this for 20 years myself. So I don't say that to impress you. I say it to impress upon you that real estate and mindset go hand in hand if you really want to go from where you are to where you want to be. 
people always ask me, you know, what does your current portfolio hold? So I'll give you a little snapshot. I'm currently developing property up here in Vancouver overlooking the ocean. I still have a ton of single family and townhouses, duplexes. I have participated in syndication deals with Andrew and with Reed, multiple ones, as well as other syndication opportunities in Texas, in Tennessee, in South Carolina, North Carolina. I did uh, some work with Dave Thompson and you know, have 505 self-storage units in Key West, Florida. We have a 1900 acre hemp farm in Colorado. I am a co-owner of a luxury resort in Costa Rica and my wife and I are shareholders in a big business in Brisbane, Australia called the Global Housing Group. So again, I've been around the block. I've got a really you know, unique perspective. And as I do this, my family and I, this is us in Byron Bay, Reed, something you're familiar with. On Christmas day oh, last yeah. year, we're leaving for Byron Bay again in two weeks time. We're gonna spend two months down under. This is us in Paris this year, Rome last year. This is us in Costa Rica. That's my little guy, Maxwell. And my wife and I have a beautiful home overlooking the Pacific Ocean in you know, Vancouver. So again, I don't say this to impress you, but I say that you guys have the same opportunity to create an exact replica of what you want when you're defiantly committed to doing so. So as I've done this work in coaching, as I've done this work, you know, as a real estate investor, it's given me perspective. You know, I'd have to be an idiot not to understand, you know, what allows people to achieve phenomenal success and yes, why other people fail. So as I get into my presentation here and I invite you to take notes and then we'll open it up to some Q&A, I want you to see some of the key concepts and the key takeaways that have allowed me and a lot of my clients to achieve greatness. So again, I'm gonna take you through what I call the forces of pain and pleasure because that's driving each and every one of you. I'm gonna talk about the six human needs. I'm gonna talk about the Tony Robbins three-step success formula. And I'm gonna wrap it up with my favorite concept called the ladder of success. So if you're up for that, turn to your neighbor, give him a high five and say, let's do this. All right. So to kick it off, I'm gonna tell you that success is defined as my good friend Tony Robbins says, as 80% psychology, that's how you think, and 20% mechanics, which is how you act. And I believe that that is spot on. So think about your psychology right now. How solid are you in your belief that you can do, be, or have anything? Because it's right between your two ears, guys. The brain weighs three pounds. It's a bunch of chemical and electrical charges that are literally causing you to behave the way you are. Right? And a lot of what we do is driven by pain and pleasure. Right? Everything we do is either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure or a little bit of both. So I want you to ask yourself right now, are you driven by avoiding pain, that is having to stay in a W-2 job forever, which sucks, or do you want the pleasure of being an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, being your own boss, having no limit to the amount of income you can make, right? Because some of you are gonna be moving towards what you want, right? We call that a moving towards modality, and some of you are gonna be moving away from what you don't want, right? So think about it in terms of the big three things in America right now. Most people say, I don't wanna be broke. They say, I don't wanna be fat. And they say, I don't wanna be lonely, right? That's money, relationships, and health. That's the moving away from. But if you wanna to move towards, you say, hey, I wanna be abundant. I wanna be healthy. And I want to have great relationships with my significant other, my kids, my parents, my siblings, my friends, my tenants. So think about it right now, because for goal achievers like Andrew, and I've worked with Andrew for many years. I've been with him in person many times. We've invested in many deals together. Andrew is a moving towards person, right? So I really want you to understand that if you want to model what Andrew and Reed and all of Wildhorn is doing, you want to really check in with how you're thinking and start moving towards what you want instead of what you don't want. If you get that concept, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Beautiful. So let's talk about what's driving all of you in terms of getting there because Tony Robbins, my main man, has come up with something he calls the six human needs. 
And have any of you ever studied or heard of these six human needs? Because at the end of the day, it's what's driving you. Anybody heard of these? Read. Yes, yeah. Excellent. And guys, I'm going to go through them very quickly. And I want you to jot them down and really think about what's driving you right now. And the first one is that need for certainty. You know, to be certain that you can go out there and do real estate deals or that you can make money or that you can be around such a kick-ass, like-minded group of individuals like the room you're in today. You know, but we also need the polar opposite of that, which is uncertainty or variety. If all you did was do the same thing every day, you'd get bored. So there's a little bit of a, a need for us to go out there and learn new things, perhaps buy new buildings, try new opportunities to really get what it is we want, which again, for most of my clients is time freedom, money freedom, and independence. That is location freedom as well. The third human need is significance. So what's driving you? Do you want to have a certain net worth? Do you want to own a certain number of doors? You know, do you want to, you know, give back to your community? There's something inside of you that will need to find a way to fuel that significance and it's inside all of us. And I don't mean from ego. You know, I checked my ego at the door years ago and now I just literally do what I do, not because it gives me huge significance, but I know that it helps other people. Number four is connection and love. We're human beings, guys. You've got to give and receive love, you know, on a daily basis to feel whole as an individual. So we call those the four primary needs and the final two are called the needs of the spirit. And this is where Andrew and I really talk a lot when we, when we work together, you know, and as we work together for three years, number five is the need for growth. Yes. My favorite growth, because I'll just ask you guys, if a plant isn't growing, ultimately what's happening to it guys. Dying. It's dying. We don't want to die. We want to survive. In fact, I can look around that room and see people that want to freaking thrive. But you've got to ask yourself, you know, am I growing? And then number six, the final need is contribution. You know, and my man Tony Robbins says that we've all got to go out there every day and make a contribution to ourselves, to our, our spouses, our kids, our community, right? And so I have this line here because I really want you guys to really think about, you know, what are you doing for number five and number six? Because if you go out there and you continue to grow and you continue to contribute in a powerful way, the universe will shower you with an abundance of opportunities and literally abundance of money. Does that make sense? It all stems from all four primary needs, but I want you to really, really go big on five and six. Does that make sense? Yep. Beautiful. And one of my favorite quotes comes from this man. Who is this? Who knows who this is? Bruce Lee. Very good. And Bruce says this. He says, in life, there are no limits. There are only plateaus. And you must not stay there. You must go beyond them. What does that mean? Well, it means if you guys don't grow and contribute, you're going to level out. You're going to plateau. And I don't want anyone in this room to plateau. I want all of you to continue in an upwards trajectory towards what it is that you are working for based on why you want it, right? And that is why you've really got to understand need number five and need number six, because most Americans, unfortunately, are focused on all of these things up here. Number one, two, three, four. And they're not reading the books. They're not joining masterminds. They're not surrounding themselves with Andrew and Reed but you guys are. So you want to give yourself a little pat on the back because you are going to grow. And again, you're contributing to each other. You did it yesterday. Andrew said you had a phenomenal day. Congratulations. And you're going to have a kick-ass day today. So guys, this is what's driving your behavior. Does that make sense? And if it does, turn to your neighbor and say, this is what's driving me. This is what's driving me. <laughs> awesome. You guys are awesome. All right. And again, if you're not growing, it means that you're being held back by one thing. Who knows the number one thing that holds us back? Mindset. Mind. Mindset, yeah. yes, but let's be more specific. It starts with the big letter F. Fear. That's it. It's fear. And oh, so have any of you ever had fear about what it is you're doing or fear about leaving your W-2 or fear about buying a building or fear that you might lose someone, 
else's money. Yes or yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Well, I'm going to kick that in the ass so that you guys think about it differently, you know, from this day forward. Because there's only three universal modalities of fear, and I'm going to teach them to you right now. And the first universal modality of fear is if I try, I could fail. Right? If I try to buy a building, it could absolutely go upside down. If I try to borrow money, what if I lose it? If I try, you know, to leave my W-2, what if it doesn't work out and I got to get a job as a barista at Starbucks? You know, sound familiar? So we're mm -hmm. going to kick that in the teeth in a minute. Number two is people might criticize me. You know, people might criticize you. You're quitting your W-2. Are you crazy? You know there's health benefits, right? You know you get a steady paycheck, right? Are you an idiot? Yep, I'm leaving my W-2. So that brings up a lot of fear in us. And number three is a big one, folks, and it's I'm not worthy. It's a self-worth, self-wealth, self-esteem issue. And I'm telling you, all of these are literally holding most people back from getting into real estate or going as far as you want personally and professionally. So what do we do when these three things come up? Well, I'm going to teach you a new law of the universe, kind of like the law of gravity. Everybody here know the law of gravity? Yes? Yep. If you jump off the roof of your house, you're going down. Well, I'm going to introduce you to a law called the law of polarity. It's a law just like the law of gravity. And it's like a magnet. And the law of polarity decrees. That means that it means that you can't have one thing without the polar opposite being available. I'll give you a quick uh, rundown. You can't have day without night. You can't have black without white. You can't have you know, the North Pole without the South Pole. Therefore, you can't have, if I try, I can fail. People might criticize me or I'm not worthy without the polar opposite also being available to you right now. So let's take a look at that. Because on the other side of these, number one, if I try, I could fail. And you folks apply the law of polarity to it. It really means that if you try, you could actually succeed and be wildly successful. Just like Wildhorn's been, you know? Just like me and Andrew leaving any corporate job and becoming entrepreneurs. Number two, that whole people might criticize me if we apply the law of polarity to that. Well, people could actually love what you're doing, get inspired from it. And hell, they might even invest in your next deal. You know, they might bring you referrals. And number three, that whole I'm not worthy, that self-worth, self-wealth, self-esteem thing is a bunch of bullshit. You guys are worthy of success. In fact, abundance is your birthright. You've got just as much opportunity to go out there and become multimillionaires as much as Reed and Andrew and I do. So I really want you guys to really remember that anytime you have fear come up, I want you to start applying the law of polarity. Does that make sense? Yep. Beautiful. So as we move on here, I really want you to think about it in terms of real estate, because these are common things that as a master platinum coach, coaching people all over the planet, I hear all the time. You know, it's tough to find great deals or all the good deals are gone. Have any of you thought that recently? Or how about this one? It's way more competitive than ever before. Or yep, yep. brokers aren't giving me the deals. Or not this one, Trevor. Yep. What if the market crashes? So what? You know? We're here to apply the law of polarity to all of these and spin these around that it's not tough, that if you work at it, you will find deals. Wildhorn Files finds deals. You know, they find good deals. They bring in investors. They cut through the competition. They build relationships with brokers all over Texas, right? And if the market crashes, it's okay because you can do what Andrew and Reed do. You know, buy for cash flow, take a longer term, you know, and do all the due diligence that they teach in buying real estate and you're going to be okay. But if fear is holding you back, you're never, ever going to become the real estate investor you could be. So I want you to all turn to your neighbor, give them a high five and say, I understand the law of polarity.
(laughs) And really, guys, it's about standing guard at the door of your mind. I want all of you to stand guard at the door of your mind because all of those statements are a bunch of BS. And BS stands for bullshit, but it also stands for something new. Please write this down. It stands for your belief systems. That means that anytime you need an upgrade, you got to check in with your beliefs and ask, is that really true? Or could I apply the law of polarity and kick it right in the ass right now? So with that said, let's move on to the three-step peak performance success formula. I'm going to go through this very quickly. And it really comes down to three little words. How many? Three. Three little words that start with the letter S. And the first one refers to your state. That's your brain and your state management. The second one is your story. And your story, guys, is your identity. And the third one is your strategy. So I'm going to run through how these three little things are either going to help you achieve greatness or hold you back. And I want you to really think about them as I go through them. Because your state is how you show up in your mind and your body. It really is. And it's made up of three things. It's your physiology. That's how you feel right now. It's your focus because where focus goes, energy flows. And it's the language that you say internally or externally. This is literally making up how you come and approach your Monday morning, your Tuesday morning, your Wednesday morning. You got to have a high performance, peak performance physiology. You got to work out. You got to hydrate. You got to ask yourself, you know, what do I need to do to get into a peak state? And then focus on what it is you need to do during the day. And most people don't focus on what they want. Again, they focus on what they don't want. And the brain is going to attract it to you either way. And then your language, you know, it's got to be powerful. If you say, well, I really should, you know, do some market research or, well, I really should drive a neighborhood. You got to turn your shoulds into musts. That's what Andrew Campbell has done. And that's why Andrew's had some tremendous success in the last few years, right? So we always check in with our physiology. That's change your body position. If you need to get up, get up and move, breathe. And remember that all emotion is changed by motion, right? Your focus is absolutely paramount because really what you focus on, you feel. And believe it or not, the quality of your life is determined by the emotions, You know, and are you moving towards what you want or moving away from what you don't want, right? And then your language, again, if you're saying I should, I might, I could, I'll try, I'm such a chicken, I don't want to quit my W-2, you got to absolutely stop that nonsense. Because again, that is driving your behavior. And something else that's also driving your behavior is your story. And again, your story is your identity. And guys, you're either, you know, a victim or you're a victor, right? And if you're a victim to circumstance, a victim to your W-2, a victim to your bitchy wife, a victim to Trump, a victim to your weather, you're gonna make decisions from a victim modality. I don't want you to be a victor, a victim, pardon me. I want you to step into what I call the highest and best version of yourself, right? And if your glass is half empty, change it. So you know what, my glass is half full and I'm gonna keep pouring water until it overflows. Okay, because Tony's got a great quote. It's probably his longest quote. He says that the strongest force inside all of us is the need to remain consistent with our identity. What does that really mean? Well, it means that you're going to show up in direct proportion to who you think you are. You know, think about Elon Musk. Any Elon Musk fans in the audience say I? I. Is that guy got a unique identity that says he is determined, he's courageous, he's committed, he's decisive? Yes or yes? Yes. What about Oprah Winfrey? Does she have a strong identity? Richard Branson, Steve Jobs, you know, Napoleon Hill. So you guys can borrow some of these character traits from some of the best in the world who absolutely own their identity, right? And again, ask yourself, who are you? What are you about? What do you stand for? And is there anything that you may be addicted to in your story that you'd like to change? Because if so, when would now be a good time to change it? Right? An example of that is, let's think you want to invest. You know, think of who you are when you aren't being the person you want to be. And I want you to all give yourself a weak name, like Calvin the Coward. 
right? I can't leave my W-2. I can't invest. I can't ask people for money. That's bullshit. You've got to give that person a name and step into who you want to be if you are doing what it is you want to do and give yourself a powerful name like Calvin the Gladiator. Because again, the strongest force inside all of us is our identity. Does that resonate with each and every one of you? Yes or yes? Yes. Beautiful. The third one, guys, is your strategy. That is what are you using to take you from where you are to where you want to be. And I'm going to introduce you to what Tony Robbins teaches at Business Mastery. People pay $10,000 to learn this in a weekend. I'm going to give it to you in two minutes. It's called RPM. And it stands for a results-focused, purpose-driven, massive action plan. So again, the R is for result. The P is for purpose. And yes, you got to go out there and take massive action to get what it is you want. So let's take a look at that. The result is the outcome you want. What specifically are you trying to achieve? What's the result you're after? So write down something you desire to have, do, or be when it comes to real estate. And remember that clarity is power. The purpose is why you want it. And Andrew Campbell has a strong why. He's got Heather. He's got the kids. He's got a kid on the way. You know, he really wants to give back. Reed is traveling this beautiful blue planet. Reed's doing podcasts, interviews, writing books. Reed's got a powerful why. So again, what is your why? Why do you want to achieve your outcomes? And you must have at least three or four big, fat, compelling reasons that back it. And you want to find leverage. Who else will be Im impacted by it? What about your spouse, your kids, your future kids, your grandchildren? What kind of legacy do you each want to leave? Right? Get clear on it. And number three, the massive action plan is to capture or brainstorm all of the things that you can think of. So when you take action on them, they're going to help you achieve your outcome. Then you want to prioritize it. You want to timestamp it. You want to leverage it and get other people to help you just like the rest of the badasses in the mastermind group. They can help you. And then folks, you must execute on it. Really, that is the peak performance success. You must get into the right state. You must have an empowering story. And then number three, you must execute with the right strategy. And if you understand three little letters, RPM, turn to your neighbor and say, I get it. I get it. I get it. All right. We're going to bring it home here with the final thing I'm going to take you through. And this is my favorite thing to teach. It really is. This is a ladder. Whether you're in Canada, Australia, or, you know, America, it's got six rungs on it. And the way that I teach this concept is that your level of effort is in direct proportion to one of these rungs on the ladder. So stay with me here. And Andrew's seen this multiple times. And again, everyone that learns how to this, use this can literally bring it into everything you do in real estate and everything you do in life. So that first rung on the ladder is where you give the least amount of effort. And I know that you guys probably don't live there if you're in the mastermind, but if you do, this is the level we call poor, P-O-O-R. But since most of you don't show up poorly in anything, at least I hope not, let's go up the ladder. Let's go up to the second level called good. Now you're showing up good, right? You're a good parent or a good father or a good conversationalist, right? But good's not good enough, guys. It's freaking 2020. I want you to show up at least great. Now you're doing things a little bit better. And then there's three other levels. So let's go above the line. This is called playing above the line where you show up excellent, you know, or you show up outstanding, <clears throat> or you show out at the top of the ladder where Andrew lives called extraordinary, extraordinary. Because here's how it works, that if you show up poor, Let's say in property management today, you're a poor property manager or you do a really bad job with your tenants. What kind of results does poor equal in today's world? Most people think poor equals poor. It doesn't. Poor equals pain. Your tenants put you through hell. And I don't want any of you to be put through pain. So let's go up. <clears throat> let's say you're good 
at having a conversation with your general contractor. Good isn't good enough anymore because if you show up good in today's world, that produces poor results. It's just not good enough. You got to go the extra mile and at least move up to great because if you show up great, now you're getting at least good results. Now, does anyone see a pattern from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen? Right? Yeah. There's a direct correlation as we start moving things diagonally up. But when you guys start playing above the line, maybe you have an excellent meeting with a broker, you're going to get a great opportunity. Or maybe you're outstanding with your business partner. That's going to equal excellent results. Or if you're extraordinary and you guys play full out with what Andrew and Reed are teaching you these two days, you're going to get outstanding results. Because I'll guarantee you that all of you are playing somewhere on this ladder. So let's take a look at it. Because let's say you are playing poorly at something. Maybe you're poor in going out to you know, meetup groups, right? It's time to start moving up the ladder. But to go from poor up to good is a giant stretch for most Americans, most Canadians, most Australians. It's like a massive leap, right? I call it the one mile of extra effort. But when you go from good up to great, you start to do things a little bit better. It's like a little bit less effort. You go one yard. And then as you go up the ladder, you go from great to excellent. It takes even less effort because it's the little things that you do, like reading books, listening to podcasts, you know, um, going to events that, you know, is maybe an extra foot of effort. Right? And then you go from excellent to outstanding guys, which is what I call six inches. And when you join mastermind groups like the one you're in and you absolutely play full out and you do things a little bit better today than you did before the mastermind started, you go from outstanding to extraordinary. It's a two millimeter shift. And the two millimeter shift happens in your brain. So I want all of you to really think about all the things you're doing in real estate and ask yourself, how much more effort am I willing to give to get these types of results over here? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And what's really cool, guys, is the latter doesn't just apply to real estate. Let me ask you, and everybody think about this. Where are you showing up on the ladder in your diet? You know, where are you showing up with your significant other? Hmm, interesting. Where are you showing up with your kids if you got them? How about your career? And we're going to get you out of that W-2. I swear to God, it's not where you're meant to be. What about your body and working out? Where are you showing up on the ladder? How about your finances? How about reading books, listening to podcasts, joining a mastermind? How about having some fun? Life is meant to be fun. When's the last time you each gave to charity? What about travel? Why don't you want to be like Reed and I and travel this beautiful blue planet multiple times a year? We're built for that. I applaud Reed for that. And finally, what about your fulfillment? Because the level of effort that you give, guys, will be in direct proportion to where you show up in life. And if you get that, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm moving up and give him a high five. I'm moving up. So as I wrap up today, and I'll open it up for a little bit of q and I want you to take what I call the 30-day mindset challenge. You know, take the next 30 days or take till the end of the year. And I want you to apply what Coach Trevor has gotten up early to deliver this morning. Because, guys, this is some of the best of the best mindset stuff on the planet. And I really want you to carve out time each and every day in your calendar and protect the time to study your notes or to go back and say, what did I learn at the mastermind? You know, anything that you can do every single day will help you go further faster. Because when you take extreme ownership over this, and when you're defiantly committed to this stuff, I guarantee that you will achieve success faster than you ever thought possible. And the final thing I'd like to give you is an awesome quote. Anybody know this man, Mr. Jim Rohn? Jim Rohn was Tony Robbins' coach. Jim Rohn was the guy that got Tony Robbins started. And this is my favorite quote of all time. And I share it when I stand on stages all over this beautiful blue planet. And Jim says this, don't wish it were easier, 
wish you were better. And I just freaking love that. I'm going to say it again. Don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. And by being in this mastermind with Mr. Campbell and Mr. Goosens, you will be better. So with that said, congratulations to each and every one of you. I applaud you for joining the mastermind. And guys, I'm going to open it up for some Q&A. Let's do this, folks. And Andrew and Reed, what are your thoughts? And did you enjoy the presentation? Well, I think I'll go first because, um, Trevor, you know, we haven't worked together yet. But I know Andrew speaks highly of you. And I know many other people in the sphere speak highly of you. So it was awesome. Thank you very much. I you know, just reflecting a little bit on, you know, write, uh, you know, writing notes down as much as I can. Um, I think it's really, really cool and, and definitely some clarity in and around. And we'll talk a little bit today about, the, you know, those certainties and uncertainties and the sort of the pillars in life to support yourself and not just being successful in business. It's about being successful in life and relationships and health and mindset and all that sort of stuff. So, but I'll, I'll hand it over to, uh, to the guys. You got any questions, guys, for, for Cheryl? I have one. Hey Trevor, thanks, uh, thanks for your time. Um, so back to that slide you put up with all those kind of excuses and you know there's no deals and all those things. Do you have any good exercises or tips on you know how to how to maintain that motivation and that persistence which you need to have to you know evidently overcome some of those challenges? Absolutely. I love your question. Give yourself a high five for asking it because I'm telling you that you know success doesn't happen in a straight line you know, we're going to hit some speed bumps. We're going to hit some roadblocks. We're going to hit some obstacles. But it's your ability to navigate those, and it's to do the work up front. It's really to condition your mindset to know that even when a challenge comes up, that I'm defiantly committed to finding a way to go over it, around it, through it, or under it. And it's really, 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 you know, learning something that I learned from Tony Robbins that I call, you know, understanding how to discipline your disappointment. That is... When things come up, you've got to learn to discipline your disappointment so you avoid the freak out, right? Most people start freaking out. And it's because they don't do the work up front to get rid of the doubts, the fears, the worries, the anxieties that are inevitably going to you know, come down on all of us. So when you really start wondering, how do I condition my mind? How do I condition you know, my thought processes? It's doing a lot of the work that we just went through and literally doing it prior to having the freak out, right? Prior to that investor saying, yeah, I'm going to put in 200 grand. And then 48 hours before the deal closes or before you raise the capital or need the money, they back out. Or having a fire in your building or having a tenant leave or a tenant, you know, take a run at you. Whatever it is, shit's going to happen in real estate, but really preparing and conditioning your mind is the greatest way to avoid the freak out. Does that help? Yeah, it is. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, great question. Next question. I, I've got a question. Um, what, what is some, you, you, you briefly spoke about before the uh, reflecting every day on, on stuff that you learn. So, you know, are there any sort of little tools that the guys can take away from today you know, that they can implement literally right now, like whether it's journaling or you, know, you talk about self-reflection and all that sort of stuff? What, what, what sort of advice do you have on that? Well, I love the question, Reed. It's a brilliant question. And really, there's a lot of different things that you can do. The first one that I highly, highly recommend is journaling. You know, capturing your thoughts, getting quiet for 5, 10, 15 minutes, and just writing down what it is you're feeling. Because you know what? When you do that, it's a very, very powerful process when you get stuff out of your head and on paper, right? And again, Tony Robbins says that if you stay in your head, you're dead right? You got to get stuff out of your head and on paper. So journaling is one, you know, also doing some affirmations or incantations. An mm -hmm. affirmation is an I am statement. So you might say something like, I am a awesome real estate investor, or I am an awesome, you know, money raiser, mm -hmm. or I am an awesome father, or, you know, go Andrew Campbell on this and say, I'm an awesome lover, right? <laughs> Whatever you want to do, affirm it. And then you can also do some incantations. Incantations are Tony Robbins' favorite. You might say something like this, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day in every way, I'm making more money. Every day in every way, I'm adding more to this world. Read books, listen to podcasts, 
one of the things that I do every single morning, I get up at 444 every morning, seven days a week without fail, is I get up and I do a lot of gratitude work. Gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. And the human brain can't be in a state of fear and in a state of gratitude at the same time. So when you're grateful, fear goes down. You literally drop out of beta brain waves and into alpha, theta, or delta. And that's where you use your conscious creation modality to really go out there and absolutely get clear on what you want, why you want it, and start pulling it to you. So I advise all of you to journal, do some affirmations, incantations, do some gratitude work. You can do some forgiveness work and give up any negative energy that you're harboring against someone else. You know, maybe it's an ex, you know, partner, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's, you know, an investor, maybe it's a, a broker that didn't give you a deal. Let that shit go. Forgiveness is a very powerful tool that if you guys just honor it and let go of shit that you're harboring, you'll be more free to create. Right? And the third one, and believe it or not, it's gonna sound corny is self-love you know most people can tell you what's wrong with them but there's also what's right with you what do you really admire about yourself Reed? what do you admire about yourself andrew what do you the rest of you admire because if you do a little bit of gratitude <clears throat> a little bit of forgiveness and a little bit of self-love you're going to totally change those neural networks of the brain to fire and go further faster does that help yeah you bet I, got, got yeah. time for one more I got a quick question. So Princey and I are, you know, husband and wife and we are business partners. So for um, so business coaching or life coaching, do you recommend one person for both of us or your separate coaches? <laughs> it's a great question. Um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, different strokes for different folks. I find that different people need different levels of coaching. Um, for a lot of people that I do coach, I coach a lot of couples in real estate. Um, Gosh, you know, there's tons of friends that Andrew and I are, are mutually, you know, connected to where I coach the husband and the wife. And then there are people that really, you know, believe that they want separate coaches. So it, it's really, you know, personal preference. Um, I think that one coach, if you guys are headed in a mutually beneficial direction and you're on the same wavelength with the same beliefs, the same values and the same rules predominantly, one coach could help you go further faster. But if you've got some, you know, stuff that you've got to work through and your wife needs to work through it and you, you really need some one-to-one -one quality time with a coach, you can do that too. So either way, coaching guys, I'll tell you, there's a couple references. Bill Gates says it's going to be as common to have a life coach by 2025 as it is an auto mechanic, a dentist, or a hairstylist. You know, even Harvard has now got a program. You can go to Harvard to learn to become an executive coach because the world is sped up so fast. We got so many things coming at us. Why wouldn't you want a partner like a coach to help you navigate all that you're going through personally and professionally? The other thing that I point out is oftentimes a coach can see your blind spots. A coach can see things coming down the pipe that you haven't even thought about. That's why I don't just talk the talk guys. I walk the walk. I have two coaches. Plus, I have an accountability partner in Seattle that kicks my ass every week. So if you're not coaching with someone, I strongly advise you to literally check it out. doesn't have to be me. If you want to chat, I'd be happy to chat with you. But, you know, at the end of the day, all coaches are not created equal. You want to find somebody that literally has a ton of knowledge and, you know, a wealth of doing what it is you're trying to do and somebody who's big on personal growth and really has a growth mindset. Does that resonate? Yes. Thank you. You bet. So as I leave you guys today, I've got a real estate event to run out to myself, and I'm going to turn you badasses loose on, on your day. I want to leave you with three things. And the three things I must have all of you write down, because it's paramount to your success. And I really want you guys to write these in capital letters, because the number one thing that I can tell you that my most successful clients have in order to absolutely achieve a phenomenal level of success is hunger. They're hungry for it. You know, they will not settle for living a mundane average life. And you know, when you've got hunger, you will go out there and do what's necessary to feed that hunger. So ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how hungry are you right now? And I want you all at a seven, eight or nine. 
The second thing I want to tell you that my best clients have is passion. Yes, passion. You want to have a passion for what it is you're doing. You know, you don't have to do real estate. You get to do real estate. You don't have to be in this mastermind. You get to be in the mastermind. So where there's passion, there's opportunity for you to go out there and crush it. And the third and final thing, and it's the most powerful thing you're going to hear out of my lips today, is your standards. Your standards are going to dictate where you end up in the next year, two, three, five, or ten. And I can tell the quality of somebody's opportunity by where they live, what they tolerate, and what they're not willing to tolerate. So I'm going to invite all of you to ask, where do you need to draw a line in the sand? And when you leave this mastermind, you're not going back. What boats do you need to burn? What bullshit beliefs do you need to get rid of? What old story that's been holding you back is time to absolutely cut that off because I want you to decide what you want your standards to be. And if you look up the Latin root of the word decide, it means to cut off from. And I want all of you to cut off from anything that is not where you want it to be in your career, your finances, your relationships, your health, your real estate, your fulfillment, whatever it is. And guys, that's all I've got for you today. I absolutely bless each and every one of you for massive success. I want to give a huge shout out to Andrew and Reed for putting on the mastermind. As again, we're all better together. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you, Reed. You guys have a kick-ass day, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too.